Jack here with a project on using our adjustment brush for dodging and burning a landscape. We've been doing a number of little portrait work uh, projects here. Let's see what we can do quickly and easily on a landscape. In this case we have a infrared shot taken over on the island of Molokai in Hawaii and uh, it's a nice shot. We have obviously the, the incredibly high contrast of the foliage versus the sky. But what we don't have is an enhancement or an exaggeration of these shapes. I really love this upper right to the lower left, this curve. We have another curve that's coming this way that kind of creates an X shape here that draws us down into the foreground. We have another curve playing off that in the foreground, which is the shadow of the valley wall coming down onto this little uh, creek or riverlet. Uh, here in the foreground, you really don't see the water very much. Um, in here. It's kind of lost in the shadow area, especially in the infrared where it's sharing the same color as the rocks around it. So what we want to do is exaggerate the shadows in here by darkening, lightening up this foreground water to exaggerate the wetness. Yes, it's wet and so I'm going to be playing with uh, our contrast and clarity. And we're also going to, since we do have these wonderful edges of shadows versus highlights, I'm going to be taking advantage of auto mask. And in a landscape, that's great because it's easy to hide that edge within all the detail, all the texture, all the complexity of something like a tree. So let's get started. We've got our adjustment brush. If you're not familiar with the shortcut, that's the K key. Just tap the K, not Command K or Control K, just K. That automatically will select the tool for you. Double click the word effect if you want to reset it. If you uh, had just done something more recent. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to take that brightness down. You know, I use brightness for my dodging and burning. I want to leave the highlights alone, just affecting my midtones. I want to keep those highlights crisp. And I'm going to now for the first time click on auto mask. Now the thing to remember about auto mask is whatever you click on first, it says, oh, that's what we we want to paint. That's what we want to select, as it were. And um, so you want to make sure that your first paint stroke is completely within the area that you want to use. The nice thing about it is it's actually intelligent, not only that it will start and continue to paint within that basic color and tonality, but if you do go outside of it, if it doesn't do a great job, if you simply do a little erase coming over here, and again, the shortcut for erase is your um, holding down the Option key on the Mac or Alt key on the PC, you can immediately switch over to the erasing function of the brush simply by just tapping that shortcut. Oh, and by the way, I mentioned the A and B version of the brush in a prior movie. That's the forward slash is also going to be a shortcut to allow you to switch between two different parameters. In this case, we have a 10 brush and a 30 brush. Those are my two parameters that I have set up right now. And it's just a toggle, tapping the forward slash not the backslash, the forward slash is allowing you access to those two brushes. Back to the auto mask, if you have that turned on and erase areas where it doesn't do a good job, as we'll see in a second, it actually becomes intelligent and says, oh, I see that is what you want me to select, that's not what you want me to select. So it's wonderful from that standpoint. And again, I like using my feather flow and density to 100% and adjust the intensity of the effect after the fact using the sliders. Okay, coming up here, I've got my brush, I've got auto mask turned on, brightness is down for my dodging and burning. I'm going to start completely within the shadow area of this image right here, not allowing it to touch the highlights of the trees at all. And I'm going to simply come up here and click and drag within this shadow area. Before I go much further, I'm going to tap the O key okay, to turn that mask on. You'll notice that when the mask is turned off, if you hover your cursor over the overlay point, it shows you temporarily shows you the mask. You can see what area is being adjusted with that particular overlay point. But if you want to leave that mask on, as I do, because I want to see where this transition is between the shadows and the highlights and how that auto mask is working, I'm going to leave that O key turned on. So now as I come over here, you'll notice that it is continuing to try and isolate out the shadows from the highlights. And we're going to zoom in in a second and you're going to see exactly what it was attempting to do. Okay, and we'll just do that right here. 
So coming up here, you can see the incredible edge that it did simply by turning on auto mask. As we move around in here, it did a great, great job of picking out the distinction between highlights and shadows. Now, if certain areas it didn't do a great job, as I mentioned before, some areas that we don't want affected, as in over here, I simply hold down the Option key on the Mac or Alt key on the PC. You'll notice that it immediately jumped into Eraser mode. I can turn on Auto Mask for that as well. So you can see that the Eraser can also take advantage of the Auto Masking capabilities within the Adjustment Brush. And as I come over here, it's now going to erase. If I were to continue to paint with the brush, it says, oh, I see, that tone is not part of what he wants. Okay, so the erase, it's going to allow us to shape it. Why am I shaping this? Because I'm creating shapes. That's the, for me, a main portion of a landscape image is these shapes, these geometric, oftentimes geometric, sometimes purely organic, but these geometric shapes are what the eye is using to create our composition. Okay, so there is the uh, mask. The Option or Alt key is no longer held down, so I can now click in and add a little bit more. Let's tap the O key to hide that. And here is R and the H key to hide that pin. There is just what that quick little dodge and burn did. And you can see how now that's emphasizing this curve here, this curve here, and drawing me uh, down into this scene. Maybe I'll do a little bit more. And again, I can continue to uh, do this um, even with everything being hidden. Okay, we'll just use that as a starting point, and I think that is great. Okay, what about this foreground here? Well, let's simply come over here, and we're going to hit New. In this case, we don't want to darken our foreground. We're going to brighten it up, so I'm going to drag that over to a plus 50. We're going to leave Auto Mask turned on. I'm going to start off with just that one parameter. Remember, I can change that after the fact, so I don't have to worry about getting the settings right. All I'm doing is simply creating a mask at this moment. I'm going to tap the O key, so I'm going to see that mask as I start creating it. Okay, so I'm just going over the water here. As I mentioned, if I get a little carried away, I simply just hold down that Option or Alt key. Let's actually zoom in a little bit. Watch what happens, by the way, to this brush when I zoom in. I'm going to hold down the space bar and click. You'll notice the brush stays the exact same size that it did when I click, zoom out, space bar. Okay, so you see that? I'll do it in, on the upper right here so you can kind of see it. Space bar, click. It doesn't change. One of the most brilliant uses of um, interface design that I've ever seen is that ability to keep the brush the exact same size when you zoom in. Because, of course, you zoom in to do detail work. Why enlarge the brush as you zoom in? Whoever the programmer was, software designer, UI designer at Adobe that came up with that idea, they deserve a good case of really, really good beer because they did an awesome job. Okay, I'm going to hold down that Option or Alt key, and, uh, well, that um, uh, particular overlay area, in this case our foreground with the water, is active. I'm going to come up here, and I'm just erasing areas that I don't want covered. I'm prim primarily emphasizing the water right now. Okay, and again, I'm not going to get too carried away since I used a nice big... Um, subtle brush, I can get away with a lot. I don't like getting too detailed if I don't need to. I'm just going along the uh, water's edge and I am cleaning it up a little bit. Again, this is an infrared, so the color of all these different areas is the same. This would not be uh, typical for most of your landscapes because you'll have color as part of the parameter as well to help with that masking process. So it's a little bit more difficult with an infrared. There's our mask. Tap the O key so we no longer see it. Here's our foreground. Okay, so now we can actually see water. We can see the sky reflecting in the water. I like that a lot better. It's much more like the story that I saw in my mind. But while that pin is still active, again, tapping the H key, you can see that area is still active down here. Okay, 
while that is still active, let's tap the H key to hide it one more time, I'm going to take that contrast up in the foreground, I'm going to take that clarity all the way up, and let's see how far we can push the wetness of that water. I'm going to take that up to 50 as well. Okay, so there is our water foreground. So just two real, there's only two adjustments here. One, the shadows up in the trees, click, 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 click. One in our foreground here, and we have shaped the uh, landscape just a little bit, but I think it makes it for a stronger. It invites you into the scene by exaggerating the water and the shape of the foliage.